Yeah, I mean, the future is always uncertain. You know? I mean, you never know what's coming, and that's what's that's what's great about it, and that's what's scary about it. You know, but you know, it's about just not living in the past. You know, it's about you know that was the first song that we were writing for the record, and just you know, it was about it was a really about a time that we were moving on. And and we were all moving on, and it could apply to anybody. It could apply to anything, and so it felt like the right thing to say. It's like, what's the? You know, Adam once told me, you know, the past is a frozen lake. And it's true. You know? Yeah, there's nothing that you can change about it, so there's no point in thinking about changing it. <clears throat> there's no. I mean, you can get things from it, but living there, there's no point. The only thing you can te- the, the only thing that you have anything to do with is from here on out. It makes you who you are. I think that you you go through time becoming who you are, you know, you know, regardless if you want to or not. It's just something that happens. But um as, the, as far as the past making you who you are, I don't think so. I think that comes from you. It comes from the voice inside of you. And it comes from the choices that you make. And the reactions that you have to the things that happen to you. I think we're in a better place than we were on the on touring the blackening right now. I don't know exactly what everybody went through as far as putting themselves into the place that we've found ourselves at. I personally have decided that I want to have fun doing everything that I do, and uh, and it just seems like having made that decision. Uh, I don't know. Everybody seems like they're having more fun right now doing what we're doing yeah i mean you know there was a lot of stressful moments on the blackening there was a lot of incredible moments and for sure that the incredible moments outweighed the stressful ones but you know i mean we live our life in public and we're pretty open about you know things that happen both good and bad and you know you watched three years of life being lived you know phil's father passing away his health problems dave's mom passing away you know stuff like that our problems you know and you know, we got through it, and there is so many more positive things that happen in there that, you know, people don't want to talk about. I don't know why, but, <laughs> you know, we're happy to talk about them. <laughs> you know, it just got easy to kind of zero in on those things. But, yeah, I mean, three years is a long time, man. It's a long time. It's a lot of life that was lived, you know, and it was great to live it. Just because it sounded a lot better, I, I, I borrowed a Yamaha from somebody, the same, uh, <clears throat> same kind of a Yamaha that I'm playing now, and, um, and just threw my rig, and with my style, it just sounded amazing, so uh, I called those guys up, you know, see if they wanted to give me a couple of them, and, and uh, you know, start playing those things, because, I don't know, it's all about... It's all about the, uh, the the way that it sounds to me, it's, and uh, what I what I had going before that just didn't compare with you know, when I when I uh, when I beat everything. So, voila, Yamaha it is. I have a you know I have a really really long history with Yamaha. Anyway, I mean I I learned to play bass on a Yamaha. I learned to you know I rode my first wheelie on a Yamaha. I, I did my first. Uh, <laughs> Did, did our first record on a Yamaha. Yeah, that Played white. my first show on a Yamaha. Yeah, the white <laughs> Yamaha, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I'm, you know, I still ride Yamaha motorcycles and, and, and I, I just, uh, I've just always, I've always liked everything that they've done. It's just a company that, that, um, that puts out top quality everything they do. You know, Dr- Dave's playing Yamaha drums and, and, arguably the best sounding drums out there totally and you know it's just like it's 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 a qual a a company that you can't go wrong with it seems like wow i should be getting paid for this (laughs) 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 
it's uh well you i mean you can do it it's a 10 day cleanse and you can do it several different ways the first couple times i did it i did it for four days so the last time i did it i did it for 10 during the recording of the record i did it for 10. I did it, yeah, I did it in the, I guess I did it right at the tag end of the blackening. I don't know, I was just kind of going through a rough time. I was, I was drinking a lot and, and uh, I was just going through a rough patch in my life and I needed something to kind of shake me out of it and I wanted to do something extreme like that that would not just subtly help me get kick-started but it was pretty drastic and it was awesome. I did it for four days the first time. And then uh, I did it for five days the next time, six months later. And then six months after that, which was then during the recording, I did it for the full 10 days. And it's, it's awesome, man. It's like, you know, you're getting 1,600 calories a day, but it's all liquid. You know food, nothing. So you're just drinking this drink that's made out of maple syrup and lemon and cayenne pepper. And, you know, it makes you feel good. You lose a lot of weight, kind of clears your head. You know, it's as much of a... Uh, as much as, as it is a physical cleanse, it's a mental cleanse as well, which is what I was primarily doing it for. Uh, no, I mean, the, the eating disorder was, you know, bulimia, I was throwing up, like making myself throw up after eating, but this is, this is something else. This is pretty healthy and, you know, it even feels healthy when you're doing it and, you know. We did, it's called brown acid. <laughs> it was just not quite as good as a riot. It wasn't quite, yeah, Nobody it was talks a, about it. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, not, I don't know if we, have we ever had an instrument? No, we had an instrumental. We had Real Eyes. That was an instrumental. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, we were such a good instrumental, we couldn't top it after that. We're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, have we ever, yeah, we've had well, one. We sampled our voices and put that over it. Yeah. yeah. It's not really. I count that as an instrumental, though. Like, that doesn't, you know, it's not really a song with a chorus and verses and you know it's more of a story being told a message I guess yeah so. yeah maybe it'll be, next record will be time for a yeah second instrumental third instrumental if you count brown acid <laughs> yeah it seemed to have I know <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was really high and it seemed a lot better at the time than it was. <laughs> better. That seems like a long ways away. <laughs> What's the goal? I know, what is the goal? <laughs> I know, like, you know, when you're a band, it's like everybody just goes, oh, you know, your goals and you're this and you're that. It's like, we're in a band, you know what I mean? Like, it's, if we were this goal-oriented, you know, we'd be probably doing something else, you know, <laughs> not being in a band. <laughs> but, yeah, I could, playing music 20 years from now would be amazing, you know, at this level and or bigger, that'd be fucking awesome. And, I mean, you look at, you know, you look at the Motorheads, you look at the Aussies, you look at the Metallicas, not the Metallicas that old, but even like the Maidens, you know, they're on, what are they on, 13th album now? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's killer. And they're doing great and they're drawing tons of people and, you know, their music is still relevant. And, you know, if our music is still relevant and the people still want it, yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't want to turn into a fucking jukebox and just play hits from burn my eyes and more things change never want to do that ever <laughs> <laughs>